have you ever wondered how to expand your service mesh for your specific business need? Perhaps you need to add external authorization or advanced rate limiting. Or maybe you want to add customer logic in your data paths to perform dynamic routing or policy enforcement. I would like to talk about service mesh extensibility patterns to help you uh, with service mesh. Hi, my name is Lin Sang. I am the director of open source with Solo.io. I have been a long time contributor to the Istio project. I'm a maintainer and currently also serve on the technical oversight committee of Istio. So before we get to service mesh, service mesh extensibility, let's talk about what is a service mesh. As part of the journey to cloud native, organizations face many challenges when managed microservices, such as connecting, securing, and observing these microservices. Why? Because microservices comes with a lot of challenges with one monolithic to many, many, many services. These services needs to connect to each other. You need to understand what if the network has failure? How do you do retry and timeout? How do you handle errors? And how do you observe what really goes on within these microservices so that you can tell which team may have a problem? And also, how do you actually secure the communication among these microservices so that your security team would actually be happy with the microservice framework you have? So service mesh in a nutshell is really to help you with these problems so that you don't have to handle how do you connect to other services? How do you secure other services? How do you send the telemetry data? How do you observe your services in your application container? And the service mesh provide the proxy for you that you can run alongside with your application container. And also most importantly, the service mesh provide a API to allow you to declare intention on how you want to configure this proxy and then the service mesh would automatically configure these proxies for you so that the proxy would follow your intention, but in a language that the proxy can understand. In Istio, the API you interact as a user is the Istio API, which is a much higher level abstraction on top of the Envoy configuration. And the Istio core plane would essentially turn that customer resource you provided following Istio API contract into the proxy configuration of Envoy, which easily could be tens and thousands of code um, of Envoy configuration with just a few microservices. So there's strong reason you don't want to do that configuration yourself. You'd rather leverage your service mesh control plan to program the sidecar for you. So today we're going to talk about what if the default control plane and data plane doesn't fit your business needs and you want to extend that. So let's talk about the data plane extensibility first. So at the bottom of the layer, we have two applications, and these applications are as part of our data plane. As you can see, when app one needs to talk to app two, essentially the proxy is the main in the middle to mediate the traffic, right? Each application container has its own proxy as a sidecar running within the same pod namespace using Kubernetes as an example. Um, so you might be wondering, how does that happen, right? So how does traffic always goes in and out of the proxy? So within Istio, 
we have something called init container that set up the IP table rules for the part so that it programmably can figure how the traffic are intercepted and redirected on that part. In fact, the first customization point we're going to talk about is the init container. In the Istio project itself, we support um, using any container to config the IP tables as the default configuration. But some of the organization may find out it's really against their security rules to have like that admin privilege to deploy applications into the net because the any container needs to config the networking IP table, so it needs the net admin privilege. So in those cases, we provide um, something called Istio CNI plugin. So the organization could use Istio CNI plugin to config um, the IP tables. It runs as a daemon set on your Kubernetes worker nodes. And it would allow the, the daemon set to config the pods as they are added to the mesh. It configs the IP table rules what the init container in those cases does, instead of programmably config the IP table rule, it simply just validates the IP table rules are good and then finishes the initialization work so that the proxy and the application container can take effect. The second um, extension point is really um, the proxy image. So the proxy image, we, in Istio, you can plug in your own image. So that's one way to extend. The second way to extend is you change the proxy config, which we provide a config map that dictates how you want the default configuration template to be, and you could certainly customize that too. You may want to customize a uh, pilot agent, or you may want to add some libraries onto the proxy image, or you may want to trim down the proxy image to provide your own image to do that before you convince the upstream, or maybe upstream doesn't have an interest because it's on your own private scenario. The third customization we're going to talk about is Envoy filter. So Envoy filter, it essentially allows you to customize the proxy configuration at Envoy level to the language that Envoy can understand. It's a very detailed API that you have to understand exactly you know, what Envoy configuration looks like and how you want to patch it. So for example, some of the common scenario we see over customer do is um, maybe enable access log uh, for the proxies a little bit. So the first one we commonly see is using WASM to be able to provide customizations. So the reason WASM is really interesting here is because it's running in the native speed and it's very easy to test. You can use um, a standalone isolated VM to test your proxy um, and your proxy extension. It can do dynamic updates without Envoy restart. Um, it really eliminates the need to recompile and maintain your own build of Envoy because you could use WASM to simply build a extension on top of it. And what I like most about WASM um, is really be able to store the WebAssembly plugins in WebAssembly Hub and be able to consume other people's plugin. So think about the Hub. How many of you use Docker Hub? I'm sure it's a lot, right? Be able to reuse other people's work, it's fantastic. So WASM really enables you 
to be able to easily catalog and share their work and reuse work from other people. So these are the four extension. The fifth extension points um, is in this diagram, one thing we haven't discussed is um, the ingress gateway, right? Or egress gateway. So typically um, you would have a ingress gateway that mediates the traffic coming into the mesh and the uh, the ingress gateway, you can also customize that using any of these customer logic we mentioned. So you could have a unique container, even though most of the case you don't need a unique container for ingress gateway, you could customize the proxy image. You could also customize, um, you could also customize the uh, a gateway using Envoy filter. You could also use the WebAssembly module to customize um, the gateway. So the gateway is really um, different from the sidecar proxy because it doesn't do automatic injection on demand. So you have that proxy configuration already up front. Um, and then you can just go to the Kubernetes YAML file to customize. Um, the gateway configuration. So let's call that um, the fix by reusing some of these same techniques, but those but apply on the gateway. And so we talked about the data plane extension points. Let's talk about the control plane extension points. Um, typically on the control plane side, the uh, one common extension point is build the abstraction over the service mesh API. For example, at Istiocon, um, Salesforce was mentioning they build the abstraction using Helm. So that is one way to build um, abstraction. eBay also mentioned they have their own abstraction using their own customer resource. At Solo, we also build uh, abstraction based on our Glue API. And that API is, um, it's a role-based API so that you can focus on roles. Um, so that's one type of extension on um, the control plane side. The other type of extension is in the control plane, you can say, I don't want my control plane to serve as a CA. Instead, I want to plug my own CA. So you could um, certainly do that with your own CA um, so that your own CA would sign and uh, all, sign all the keys and certificates for all the workloads in the mesh. So these are the two common um, control plane extension points. Let's go ahead and see a demo. Um, um, so this is my Kubernetes environment running my on my laptop cluster one, as you can see. So I have a kind cluster, and in my cluster, I have a bunch of stuff installed. I have Istio installed, first of all. Um, I have um, the book info installed. Um, the only thing with booking for is I didn't install version three. So I have review version one and two. I also have a simple example called Istio in action. Uh, in the Istio in action namespace, uh, it's the web API example uh, and the recommendation and the history. And those are the slip. So a lot of the interesting stuff you can see, you know, these um, apps are already in the mesh with the two slash two. That means uh, it has sidecar next to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through each of the configuration we talk about, right? So let's check the web API, for example. Let's check out the, its configuration. So we talk about the first configuration extension point is the init container, right? So this is the init container um, used by 
the by Istio, as you can see, it can fix a bunch of IP table rules and uh, it captures the incoming traffic and outgoing traffic. And all that configuration is done, then the proxy um, takes place um, and the, the application container. So one thing interesting on the proxy is you can see, you know, the image is highly customizable. Um, the bunch of, a bunch of other configuration are also customizable. And what's interesting in this scenario is we actually enable the configuration uh, called hold application until true. So essentially this says, you know, you don't start the application until the proxy is ready. And this is important because some of the application, uh, it's right here, some of the application really requires um, maybe get out of the network or maybe just for security purpose, they don't want the application to do any job before the proxy reaches running. Okay, so we talk about one and two. Let's talk about this, uh, the third one, which is using Envoy filter, right? What we're going to do is apply an Envoy filter called um, Web API logging audit. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so essentially what this does is it says, hey, I'm applying this because I want to apply it to the sidecar of the web API and I want to change my logging format to add these configurations. An interesting configuration I would say here is like the search um, and also like the the X forward for the response. So that's not print out by default. So let's um, apply this and generate some traffic to it. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to generate some traffic from the issue in action. Um, from the sleep pod in the sleep container. So if you look at the sleep um, sleep pod in the sleep namespace, you can see it's one slash one. So in this case, if you look at the logs, it would not have um, anything interesting. So you can see because it, the search is like blank because we're not doing any search because the sleep Pod doesn't have sidecar. Um, so let's try to generate the traffic from the sleep container within the issue in action. And you can see this time we actually have two slash two in there. So let's try to look at the logs. And you can see in this time, the logs is print out like interesting data, right? The search information, we ask to print the URI. It's all printed out for you. So this you can use this technique to check, you know, if the traffic is indeed um, neutral TRS uh, and what are the thirds and the URI are using through the two microservice communication. The fourth approach uh, we're going to show is using WebAssembly. Let me bring my. Um, over. So I have a filter here called my filter. And uh, in this filter, um, the, it's a written in an assembly language. And in this filter, the only thing I change is um, on the response header side, I want to add hello world uh, through this filter, WebAssembly filter. And uh, let, let, let's build that. So build um, the filter and also push the filter to my registry um, in WebAssembly Hub. So you can see I'm running the WAS and build command um, and then I'm trying to uh, build it. And then I'm also trying to uh, push it to the hub and you can see it push to the hub successfully. And then let's quickly validate that in the hub. So this is over WebAssembly Hub. 
Let's quickly validate it in the head. Okay, so you can see um, my filter, which is the WASA module I just added 30 seconds ago. Okay, so we have our WASA module in the WebAssembly Hub. Let's go ahead and use it on the review version one. Throughout workload selectors, I can specify this is only for review version one. Let's take a look at the on-way filter generated. As you can see, review version one wasm, so the corresponding on-way filter is generated for me automatically. Um, let's check how the filter works. So what I'm going to do now is from product page to call the reviews. And notice we have version one and version two of review on the local cluster. So you're going to see um, sometimes hit the hello word, sometimes not. So now you can see what we have done is we build a WASM plugin and we push the plugin to the hub and then through the WASM deployment configuration, we brought that into our cluster and then have it apply to the review version one service. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, this is my cluster two on the right side and at the bottom is my management cluster. So cluster two is pretty much same as cluster one. The main difference is um, it doesn't show, it doesn't have uh, reviews for version one and version two, just to simple show traffic routing and shifting. And uh, if you look at the bottom cluster, which is the management cluster that I installed, it has um, it has the management layer. So essentially um, that I can deploy my abstracted API, which is the role-based uh, Glue API we talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of the management layer now. But what I want to do is I want to apply the virtual destination CRD, which is the abstraction CRD uh, we built on top of the Istio resources. And you can see this says I'm creating a reviews.global to represent all the review services across different cluster. And the other thing I just created is traffic policy. So traffic policy allow me to say, you know, shift to the failover. Um, um, and if local fails, go ahead and shift the traffic to the virtual destination. Um, that we did just defined, uh, which is go to global. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the cluster ones um, to see. Okay, now I'm visiting the booking for um, the cluster ones ingress gateway. As you can see right now, you know, it's run robbing between the clusters um, because, you know, I have both one, two, three in place. But now if I go here and shut down my reviews uh, one and two in the first cluster, uh, let's see if, uh, if Istio can handle that automatically. So um, let's go here. And now guess what? The quick now. I'm expecting to only see version three because version one and version two are down in the, in the first cluster. Okay, let's check out the configuration for these because uh, you might be wondering what's the magic, right? Config the like, two resources, uh, traffic policy, and also the virtual destination. And now you have a complicated, uh, interesting failover scenario already played. So what we're going to do is looking at the UI um, to help you understand what's really going on. One thing I like the UI is because it allows you to 
to look at the debug configuration of Istio. So if you go here, you can actually see this is cluster one and cluster two. You can see actually how many virtual services and service entry that's actually behind this thing, including an envoy filter. So we talk about envoy filter. Like in this case, we actually have an envoy filter that applies to the gateway to handle the intro gateway among multi-cluster and to handle the SNI port 15443 to say, you know, for the traffic that costs for cluster1.global change to cluster.local so that the traffic can be forwarded from the gateway to the local service. So this really shows you um, the power of building abstraction. Like your user doesn't have to create a lot of virtual service, service entry and destination rules. Let's wrap it up. As you can see, service mesh extensibility are super powerful. We went through different ways to extend the data plane, which can be applied to the sidecar proxy and also be applied to the gateways. We also went through building abstraction layer on top of the service mesh API and also plugging your own CA for your service mesh. We would like to have you share us your extensibility stories and see if any of these extension patterns would fit your requirements. Thank you very much. Um, I would love to hear any questions you guys have.